we think about this Japan event that has just happened, it's the largest event in instrumental records um, um, in Japan. It's the largest earthquake that they have ever experienced. The last time that this, deposit, this type of event happened was discovered in a deposit about a thousand years ago. In actual fact, in, in, in 908 AD, it's recorded in um, um, samurai warrior records, it's recorded in the deposits. So you can start to work up a recurrence interval. So how often do these events happen? Why is there an earthquake in Japan? Well, that's because it's on the Pacific Ring of Fire where 90% of the earthquakes occur. It's where there are a lot of converging plates Okay? And so what's so special about Japan? Well, Japan has a lot of microplates, and particularly where this earthquake occurred, the Pacific plate is plunging beneath the, um, the Asian plate at a rate of around 5 centimetres per year. It causes a large amount of strain. At some point it's going to go, and it went today. Why does it produce a tsunami? Well, that's because the strain causes one part of the plate to really just pop up. It moves the upper level of the sea surface causes what is called the tsunami wave. Tsunami waves have incredibly long wavelengths, hundreds of kilometres, which means it can travel at incredibly fast speeds, 500 kilometres per hour. As it approaches the shoreline, the wave has friction with the seabed, causing the wavelength to shorten and the wave height to increase. If you're in a coastal area and those tsunami waves come in, you know, you're obliterated. The only means to fully understand the risk in these areas is through geological observations, which basically go down through the core and count up how many earthquakes, how many tsunamis. You date them and you can say, well, along this coastline we have a, a, a great earthquake of a similar magnitude to the event that occurred today every 300 years or every 500 years or every 1,000 years. It's the only means to fully understand the risk of, an, of a region. The US coastline on the west coast is primed for this to happen exactly the same and, and um, if you go to the west coast there are tsunami evacuation routes but I'd love to know how many people are particularly aware of this.